Hello, everybody, and welcome. I am developer relations engineer David Jones Gilardi. And today I'm going to show you how to build a very simple, basic, agentic workflow using DataStax Laneflow. And then we're going to add a little icing on right at the end. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here I am in Laneflow. Um, I created a new folder that is empty. Uh, so there's, there's no other flows here. Um, and all I really want to do is I want to click this new flow, right? And you're going to see that it pops up with a set of templates. Now, the one that we're interested in for today is this simple agent. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that and let it create this flow. Now, what's cool uh, about agents is that they give LLMs agency, right? So they give them agency to choose and kind of reason what tool they need for a particular job. And in the latest lane flow, right, the, the agent component has actually been kind of consolidated and reworked and, and made a lot easier to work with because agentic flows by their nature can start to get a bit complex. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down what we're seeing here in the flow. And then we're gonna do a little experimenting. Um, let me just pop over a little bit. All right, so notice here, uh, we have a set of components. We have this URL tool, we have a calculator tool, we have our chat input so we can talk to the LLM just like we would normally do. Now notice this is an agent component. If I were to come over here on the left-hand side and say agent, I have this agent component, right? And that's the one that we just set here for, you know, by default for you. Um, and notice the model provider, right? So I can choose from sets of models um, and various, you know, I'm sorry, sets of providers and then uh, the models that they have in there. And this, I'm just going to stick with the default of OpenAI using GPT-40 Mini. Uh, then there are some instructions. Now, you can modify these a lot more. Um, you can make them more explicit and, and such. But for our particular need right now, just a very basic agentic flow, all we're going to say is something like, hey, you are a helpful assistant that can use tools to answer questions and perform tasks. And we're telling it something about how we want to how we want it to give us our output. And then finally, we have a chat output. Now, something I want to point out here is that for agents, you'll see that it's got this little node called tools. So if you have a tool, all you have to do is wire it up. Um, and then we'll see in a moment uh, when I bring the icing on I was going to tell you about. Um, it is important that the tool does have a description, uh, like you see here, like fetch content from one or more URLs. Um, you know, in the calculator, perform basic arithmetic operations on a given expression. Um, these types of things are important because it's those it's the tool descriptions that the LLM is going to use to help it determine which one to choose. OK, let's go ahead and do an experiment. We're going to come in here and we're going to say something like this. Um, what is uh, five plus six point blah, 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 blah times da, 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 divided by six. Now, historically, large language models are not good at these. Oh, fail. You know what I did? I forgot to put my A. You need a key. So uh, when you are talking to one of the um, uh, one of the model providers, like OpenAI in this case, you do need a key. And I did not uh, put that in place. So let's go ahead and Good thing it did tell me though, and I knew very quickly that I forgot to put my key in. Let's try that again. Okay. Now, historically, LLMs are not good at all at math, right? There are some that are getting pretty good at it, but generally speaking, they will make a lot of mistakes and everything. So the real key is to see what it did here. Now, this is super cool. So if you, you know, if you're not familiar with the latest version of Langflow, when you're in the playground and you're especially if you're using tools, it'll give you a breakdown. So that's what I did here with this little drop down. So I can kind of inspect and see what's going on under the hood. But notice what it did here. It took my input, my question, and it says executed calculator. So in this case, the LLM agent, right, OpenAI's uh, GPT-40 Mini was able to determine that it needed to use the calculator tool to actually perform this task. And so it goes down here, it takes this expression, use the calculator tool, and then it gives me an answer, right? And if you really want to, you can sit down and figure out whether that is right. Um, but I'm, I'm pretty darn confident from what I know about this and the fact that it actually used the calculator and didn't try to use the LLM itself to reason this out. Now let's go to the next one. Notice that the other tool we had here is the URL tool. Now I should be clear, there are an absolute ton of tools at your disposal. And something that I find personally awesome is that the new custom components can be all made into tools. You can write your own code, right? All this is Python under the hood, right? You can write your own code and hook them up. You just pop them in the tool mode, 
hook them up, now they're a tool, right? That is super powerful, but that's not what we're talking about right here. So the next one I have is this URL tool. So what I want to do is say, um, give me information from data, datastacks.com. What are the top three feature, feature, if I can only spell feature, highlights, okay? Let's see what it does. Now, obviously, I don't expect it to use the calculator. Maybe the LLM knows something, but what I really want it to do is use that tool. So let's see what it does. So it gave me this output. Um, what did it do? Okay. Ah, notice it executed the URL fetch content using the tool. It went to datastacks.com. It went and got information, and then it gave me the output as I exit, you know, as I asked it to. It summarized the top three features. So again, it was able to choose on its own whether or not it went and used that URL content. Now, that alone is actually pretty darn cool. You have all these various types of tools. You can create custom code, all sorts of things. But one thing that comes up more and more, um, especially when working with like vector data sets and everything, you know, maybe RAG, you know, retrieval, uh, augmented uh, generation type, you know, pipelines and things like that is, well, what happens when I want to look at data outside of my vector data? Can I expose a tool that can just read my data? And the answer is yes. Check this out. So I, I'm super excited about this one, by the way. Um, so I'm going to come over to tools. I'm going to go to, in this case, AstroDB, because I want to read data from one of my local collections. Okay. And I actually have, you know, what I'm going to do, let me, um, let me put these together. And matter of fact, I'm going to split them. Let's see like this. Okay, great. All right. And pull this out and pull this down. Okay. So I've got this table, uh, this collection here of movies and in it, I'll just pull this up. There's all this movie data, right? And if I pull down here, you'll see that I have like all these different movies. I've got things like directors, Right. If I look at the Jason. OK, great. I have like director John Woo. Now, if I were to come in here and I say add filter, I can come down and I can say director and I could say, let's grab John Woo. And so this what this would do is this should give me all of the movies. By John Woo that I have in this data set. Right. So if I look back at my table now, great. I see that I actually have two movies here. Uh, what are they? Oh, here's the titles, right? I say I have these two movies from the 90s, uh, 80s and 90s from John Woo. Now, this is just me doing this filtering at the database level. But what I really want to do is I want to do this from within Langflow, and I want to expose this data as a tool. OK, so let's see if we can do this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in, like you saw me a second ago, I went to the AstroDB component and tools. I dragged that over. And uh, well, for one, the database, uh, let's see, where's my guy? Do, 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 do that one. And then the collection, I believe, is movies. Yep. Now, here's the key thing. I'm going to say bang or exclamation point director. Why? Why am I saying exclamation point director? Because the field that I am looking for here is director. Right. So in order to get access to that field, that particular field, I'm going to pass it this param because I want this tool to then search using the director field. Right. Um, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to say movie director lookup. And then I'm going to give it a description. This is important. Right. Say a tool to look up movies by director. This is the part that is going to let the LLM know what this tool is actually doing so it can try to pick the right tool for the job. And finally, what we're going to do is we're going to wire this up with the other tools. OK, now I'm going to come back over to my playground. Now, we had these previous questions, right? But this time I'm going to say, tell me about movies by director John Moo. And let's see. Let's see. Does it pick the right tool? This is the key thing, because, you know, there's a good chance that the LLM has knowledge about this. It also has the URL tool that it can use. Maybe it'll use both. Let's see what it does. OK, here we go. All right, so, oh, that's fun. OK, let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh, that was the first one. Right, right, right. That's when I forgot to put in my stuff. Here we go. Check this out. So notice I have, tell me about movies by director John Woo, executed movie director lookup, John Woo, and now it's pulling out those same movies, right, 
that we saw, if I go back to table mood here, table mode, right there, right? That's that's the title of that one. I can't say that I can pronounce those, um, but that is what it's pulling out here. So it's pulled that information out, and now that is what it is using to then provide this output, right? And you can actually see here, it's providing information on both these movies that it got from my data set. So super cool that in this particular case, I've got three different tools and the LLM was able to determine which tool for the job that it needed um, to, to essentially handle my request. How cool is that? Um, so with that, thank you everybody. I hope you got something useful out of this and happy coding. See you later.